Hello the world of YouTube. Paul Wakin back with the Universal Law of Numbers. And I'm hoping that the light will start to cooperate with us maybe a little better. Um, I don't know. Can you see that okay? Nobody's answering. Well, first I would off, I would just like to have you look at that anyway and consider that for a moment because we're familiar with these numbers. These are the numbers 1 through 81, and even though we customarily do not write them like that, that's what they come out to when they're reduced, and I want you to consider that because, uh, you know, maybe somebody out there thinks that God made a mistake on that day. But you really have to ask yourself, uh, could that be a coincidence, and does it not have any information at all? Is it really something that we should overlook as, uh, as if it's non-existent? So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to go over quickly some of the codes and some of the aspects of the codes, and I'm going to take out the 369 code, and I'm just going to do uh, childhood arithmetic, 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12, and on and on and on. And we see that that is the 369 code. It's going 369, 369, 369, uh, just adding by threes. Okay. So does anybody out there think that's a coincidence? Okay. And now we're going to add by sixes. And we're getting 396, 396, 396, 396, 396, 396. We can go like that to infinity, but we won't do that today. We're, we have some time constraints. Um, what about this um, 147, the 714 code, the 417 code? We add by 3. And we get 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, to infinity. Anybody out there object or think that that's a coincidence? And now we're going to do the 174. We're just going to add 6 to each number, and we're going to get 174, 174, 174, 174, 174, 174 to infinity. Anybody object? that that goes to infinity or thinks it's a coincidence. Now we're going to do the 258 code. 2 plus 3 equals 5 plus 3 equals 8 plus 3 equals 11, which is a 2, and it continues 58258, 258, 258 to infinity. Anybody think that's a coincidence? Raise your hand if you think it's a coincidence. And we have 285, uh, and we're adding 2 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, and we get 285, 285, 285, 285, 285, 285 to infinity. Any coincidences in that one? Let me know. Now we have the 181 code. We add 1 plus 7 plus 2 plus 7 plus 2 plus 7 plus 2 plus 7 plus 2 plus 7 plus 2, and we get 181, 181, 181, 181, 181, 181, 181 to infinity. Any questions? Now we have the 595 code. Uh, 959, as you uh, choose. 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4, and we get 595. 595, 595, 595, 595, or 959. Any questions? Anybody object to that as being a coincidence? What about when we go 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 and get 494, 494, 494, 494 to infinity? If anybody has uh, any questions, just raise your hands. And then we'll just show you how we write uh, typically the numbers 1 through 81. And uh, that is just one 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 two 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 three 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 four 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 five 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 six 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 seven 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 eight 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 nine nine nine. Does anybody object to that or believe it's a coincidence? Or maybe you know more than God. What do I know? No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. So 
Uh, that's the basis of this arithmetic. But this arithmetic tells a much, much deeper story. Because what we have is we have the universal code of numbers. And the universal code of numbers is, in essence, the universe. And inside of the universe, we have all of the universal constants. Well, why is that? Well, we know that inside of the universe, we have... We have spirals, yes, you see them in galaxies, you see them in hurricanes, you see them in the way plants uh, grow, and yes, we also have circles in the universe, and yes, we also have cubes in the universe, and we also have things like spheres in the universe and all of the geometric forms, they're always appearing throughout in the universe, and that's why we have a universal law of numbers. Because all of these numbers, these important numbers, phi, pi, Fibonacci sequence, etc., they are actually phenomena which occur in the universe. Which universe? They occur in this universe. In this universe, we have pi. Because pi is uh, associated with the circle. 2 pi, right? And we know that if we look up in the sky during the daytime, we may see a sun, and that's a round object. And possibly in the evening when we look up in the sky, we see the moon, and that's also a round object. And they occur in the universe too, in this universe, because this is talking about the round object. It's talking about the circle that revolves around and around and around. So I did an introduction to pi and 2 pi, and basically all I proved was that uh, pi is described by the universal law of numbers. And I gave, uh, I did it with 6.28 for uh, 2 pi, and then I just, uh, you know, halved that and did it with 3.14 for pi, but in actuality, it's a little bit more uh, complicated than that. Yes... Pi is depicted and embedded in the universal law of numbers. But pi is a little bit, uh, well, the thing about it is it's a circle, and inside of the circle, it, it um, I guess you could say it's moving. It's a moving object. Just like the universe is expanding... You know, the circle uh, is, is about a moving object, and, and because of that, we study trigonometry, don't we? We study how the triangles and the angles change inside of the circle, and we use sines and cosines and tangents and cotangents and secants and cosecants. <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm doing is uh, trigonometry, too. But you don't see any cotangents or any cosecants or anything like that. But basically, you know, if you just look at the number pi, and let's do that quickly because that's important. 3141592652. So at first glance, you know, one thing we can do is we can see that it's 3, and then we can get a 6 by going 1, 4, 1, you know, two ones and a 4, or we get a 6 with the 5 and the 1. We also go to 9, 2, 6, 5. They add up to 36. 36 plus 54, which is uh, one of the main numbers in the universal law of numbers, because these columns add up to 54. I guess uh, 51, 54, well, quickly, 5, 14, 21, 28, 32, 30, 28, 1, 5, 14, 21, 28, 37, 41, 42 and 9 is 51. So this is a 51 and then it's 54, 51, 54, 33, and uh, 54 again, I believe. Quickly, 3, 12, 16, 21, 30, 37, 45, and 9 is 54. So that's a 54 column. And I did another video that shows you how all of the columns add up. But in any case, we can see that just by looking at the first nine numbers of pi that add up to 36, 
that uh, it's suspiciously kind of telling us it's got to do with the 369 code. Uh, and it is. And if we just round pi off to 3, we get that sequence, 369, 369, 369. But pi is not 3.0. Pi is uh, 3.14 followed by an infinite number of digits. But those digits do maintain a sequence. The sequence that they maintain is the 369 code. And why do they maintain the 369 code? Because pi is inside of the universe. It's part of this universe, this universe right here. So, of course, pi will uh, be embedded inside of the universal law of numbers. It's just natural for it to do so. Now we'll just, uh, we'll do it with 3.1. You know, and uh, now we're going to get 4837261591. Okay, so that's the 369 code, and you can also see the 248751 code uh, embedded in between. And now we'll take it up to 3.14, and it goes 8765432192. So that's the 369 code as well, by just adding on the number 4. Now we're getting more specific about pi. And now, when we do it with 3.141, we're going to get a series of nines. So that's, that, I would have to say, is basically the circle making a final re re revolution, you know. Uh, it's moving around, and it's showing us how it moves around. But it's going to be the 369 code. When we add 5 onto that, we're going to get 3.1415, and it's 516. Two seven three eight four nine, the three six nine code with the two four eight seven five one in between. When we put the next number on, it's a nine. Nine never changes it, so it's going to be the same sequence: five one six two seven three eight four nine. Nine 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 number nine. Then, if we add the two onto the nine, we get seven five three one eight six. 429, and that's the 369 code with the 248751, you know, 248751. And now we'll just add the next number on, which is a 6, and we're going to get 4837261591, which is the 369 code with the 248751. And then it comes around and it makes a full revolution again, and we're back to 9999999 by adding the next number on in the series. So, as you can see, it's clearly demonstrated that pi, the sequence of numbers that go on to infinity, are following the 369 code. And if you have any doubt about that, 369, 369, 369. Okay, good. Is that a coincidence, folks? Or is reducing numbers all a bunch of crap? Okay, so now we're going to do it with 2 pi, and we're going to just, you know, uh, 2 pi is going to start really with 6.28. But if you look at 2 pi and you round it off to 6, you're going to get the 639, 639, 639. And if we put, you know, look at 6.28, we can round that up to 6.3. And if we do that, we're going to get a sequence of 9s, and 6.3 is half of 6. Point, is twice uh, 3.15. So as if pi was 3.15. But now we're going to get more realistic about it. And we're going to say 2 pi is 6.28. And we're going to get the 369 code with the 248751s uh, embedded within. Following the same sequence. Of course it's going to follow the same sequence. It's just, it's 2 pi. It's the circle. And... By adding the next number onto the sequence, 2 pi equals 6.282, we're going to get a series of 9s. That's the 369 code. 9, 9 is the full circle. And if we uh, do it with 6.283, that's an interesting one because we actually get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I think we all are familiar with those numbers. And we also get that when we do 6.28318. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I wonder if that's a coincidence too. Okay.
And we'll just finish it off here with 6.283184. We get 5162738489, which is the 369 code. So, folks, pi follows the 369 code. 2 pi follows the 369 code because a circle is in... Guess where? In the universe. And what universe is this we're speaking of? This, my friends, is our universe. It's the universe we live in. And just like this uh, natural logarithm E belongs in the universe, so does pi belong in the universe, so does phi belong in the universe, so does the square root of 2, which is a very uh, important number in trigonometry, as you know, uh, is in the universe, as are the Fibonacci sequence, because they're found all over in the universe you know, DNA, whatever, uh, in radiation physics, uh, you know, uh, I believe things were, were decaying, uh, according to that sequence, uh, but, you know, people have studied these Fibonacci numbers a lot, and, uh, they're just a reality of our universe, so, that's all well and good, but what I'm trying to do is just uh, demonstrate how all of these universal numbers are going to be part of the universal law of numbers, which is the universe and all of those elements that uh, are found in the universe uh, that follow nature and natural laws are going to be found in the periodic table of mathematics, which is otherwise known as the universal law of numbers. And the universal law of numbers uh, describes the science of mathematics. Let's see, is that any better? Yeah, let's, let's give it some light. We want, the, we want the universal law of numbers to have some light. Those are the universal law of numbers. Um, it's not a coincidence, and it's not a creation of man. It's a creation of the universe, because when you square a number, take it to the third power, fourth power, fifth power, sixth power, seventh power, it follows this sequence, and then it revolves back to the same sequence as if it was squared, and now it's x to the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, and now it revolves back to where it was when it was squared, or x to the eighth, and now it's thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and now it revolves back to 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and now it revolves back to 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and I hope you get the point. So, um, people, this is how you learn mathematics, and this is how you'll understand all mathematics. And if uh, somebody, you know, slapped you on the wrist when you were a little child for noticing that uh, this chart of, of the numbers you know, 1 through 81 and on to infinity is just a sequence of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, you should have gotten the Nobel Prize, you know, for that. Because the teacher was wrong and you were right. So anyway, folks, I hope you all have a very nice day. This is Paul Whittakin coming to you from the University of the Universe with the Universal Law of Numbers. And I want to give it to you so you can see it. Okay, so think about that one when you're going to sleep tonight. Learn it, um, study it, and uh, you'll be wondered by the whole thing. Bye. Peace and happiness to the world.